let's go back and revisit this area under a curve. So let's say I've got some function here, y equals f of x. And we mentioned in a previous video that one of the ways that we could find some areas under the curves is to make some rectangles and find the areas of these rectangles under the curve. And so let's say I take this interval from A to B, because this is the block that I want to find the area under the curve of, and I divide this into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rectangles. So my first rectangle is going to come up like this. This will be the second rectangle coming up, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So the question is, is how high do I make, say, this first rectangle? Like, where do I stop the height of this rectangle? And we have some options here. We could say, let's, let's stop at the left end point. Uh, we might say, let's stop at the middle of, of the rectangle. Or let's stop at the right end point. So how about on this first one, we decide we're going to stop at the left. In this first example, we're going to stop at the left end point. So the height of the, each, each of these rectangles will be equal to the y value at the end of, or the left side of, of the uh, interval. So here, this one would come up to here. This one would come up to here. This one would come up to here. This one would come up to here, to here, and to here. So then the area, the area under this curve, I could approximate by finding the area of that first rectangle plus the area of the second rectangle all the way up to the area of each of these seven rectangles. So I could say the area is approximately equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3 all the way up to A7. And that's great, but maybe we can use sigma notation to better express um, this sum, because this is really just a bunch of rectangles here. So let's, let's do that. So we know that the area of each rectangle is length times width, or base times height, if we think of this one here. So the base of each of these things is going to be some delta x, some change in x value. Um, we could actually figure out what that delta x is if we knew what these numbers were, because we would simply find this distance here, b minus a, and divide that by 7, because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 rectangles. So you can always find your delta x by going b minus a and dividing by n rectangles. So we decided to go with 7 rectangles here. So if we knew that number and that number, we could go b minus a to get this total width and divide by 7, because we'd have 7 rectangles. So we'll just say each of these, for now, we'll just say each of these is delta x, some change in x value in each one of these rectangles. And then we have the height. The height of this first one, so A1, the area of this first rectangle is base times height. The height is going to be equal to f of x, so the y value, right? The y value here will be the, the height of this first rectangle. And so let's call this f of x1 x1 will just be some right here, I guess, x1. And then this point is x2. We'll call that x2. There's x3, x4, all the way up to x7. So the height of the first one is f of x1. So the area is going to be f of x1 times delta x. The second one, its area is going to be the height, f of x2, times this same width, delta x and so on and so forth until we get to a7, with the, which is f of x7 times delta x. And then remember, we want to add all of these things up. So we could say that the area, we're going to write this in sigma notation now, the area is approximately equal to the sum of each of these fxks, so that's the height times delta x from k equals 1 
all the way up to 7. So this would be an expression for, in sigma notation, for the sum of all these rectangles. When I put 1 in here, I'm going to get f of x1 times delta x, which would be the area of the first rectangle. Then I put in 2, f of x2. That would be the height of the second rectangle here, times delta x, its width. And so on, all the way to 7. f of x7 would be the height of this last rectangle, times its width, delta x. So just a couple of comments here about this area. We decided we would use the left end point here in our diagram, but we could use we could have used the midpoint, and we could have used the right end point. Or we could have arbitrarily picked any x value in the middle of our rectangle here and used that value to determine the height. So this is a general expression for uh, our area under our curve if we used seven rectangles. Now if we wanted to make this more accurate, I think you would understand that the more rectangles we put under here, the more accurate the area is going to be. So if right now we use seven, if I decided to use ten rectangles, obviously the rectangles would be skinnier and they would better approximate the area under the curve. And if I said how could we make this more accurate, you'd say well let's use more than ten, let's use a hundred. And I said well that's still not good, good enough. You'd say well let's use two hundred. And if, I, if we wanted to get closer and closer and closer to the true area under this curve, I think you'd say we really want to have the number of rectangles under this curve approach infinity. So instead of limiting our top number to 7, if we did this, we could say the area under this curve will equal the limit as n approaches infinity of these rectangles under the curve. So if I, instead of stopping at 7, if I looked and saw what would happen if I put an infinite number of rectangles and added up all those areas, this would represent the exact area under that curve. So this is interesting here because this is a limit, which is invo obviously involving um, some work with some calculus, and we are simply adding up a bunch of areas of rectangles under the curve. And this expression here is so significant for us that we would want to represent this using this symbol right here. So the area under the curve from A to B because that's what we were doing right here, finding this area under this curve from A to B. That's what this symbol is going to represent, the area under the curve from A to B of f of x, which of course is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of that sum. So just understand when we're finding the area under the curve, if we let n approach infinity, the number of rectangles approach infinity, then the symbol that we use to demonstrate that is the integral from a to b of the function with respect to x. Let's look at some examples here now. Okay, let's say we're asked to find the approximate area under the curve of y equals 2x minus 1 over the interval from 1 to 5 using a right endpoint approximation and four subintervals. So let's draw a little picture of this. So I've got the line 2x minus 1, so a y-intercept of minus 1, which would be down here, and a slope of 2, so up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, 2 over 1, 2 over 1, 2 over 1. So this would be the line here. And I got to go from 1 to 5. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I got to find an approximate area under this curve using four rectangles. 
and they want a right endpoint approximation. So here's my four rectangles starting to come up here. And I'm going to use a right endpoint. So this first rectangle between 1 and 2, I'm going to make the height equal to the right endpoint. So the right endpoint would be 2. That's going to be my height. On my second rectangle, the height will be equal to the right endpoint. So like so, like so, and like so. So here's my four rectangles, A1, A2, A3, and A4. And remember, my width of each rectangle, well, it's pretty obvious it's 1 here, but it would normally be found by going B1 minus A divided by N. So my B value is 5, take away where I started, which was 1, divided by 4, because I have 4 rectangles. Of course, 5 minus 1 is 4, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. So delta X, my width of each rectangle is going to be 1. And let's start calculating a1 here. So a1 would be the height of a1 is going to be equal to f2, the right endpoint, times delta x, which is 1. a2 is going to equal f3, that'll be the height of my rectangle, times delta x, which is 1. a3 will be f4, the right endpoint of uh, rectangle number 3 here has a height of f4 times 1. And my last rectangle is going to have a height of f5 times the width, which is 1. So now I've got to do a little bit of math here. Here's my function. f of x equals 2x minus 1. So I need to put 2 in for x. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So the height of this rectangle is 3, and its width is 1, so 3 times 1, that has an area of 3. The second rectangle is going to have a height of f3, putting 3 in for x, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 minus 1 is 5, 5 times 1. This one has an area of 5, and I think you'll quickly see that this one will have an area of 7 times 1, which is 7. And finally the last one, f of 5, 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 times 1 is 9. So the area under my curve, under this graph, from 1 to 5 is going to approximately equal 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9, which is, there's a 10, there's a 10, so 20 plus 5, 25. And from our little sketch here, it's pretty obvious to see that these rectangles are overestimating the area under the curve. So the true area under this line here would be less than 25, but these four rectangles would approximate the area to be 25. And of course, if I said use n equals 24 subintervals, so if we did 24 little rectangles, there'd be a lot more work finding the area, but we'd have a more accurate, um, a more accurate answer at the at the end. So now what if, what if we had to do this one? It just says determine the, the area under this curve. Remember, that's what this means. But this is the exact area. So the exact area from 0 to 3 of 2x. So I'm just going to draw another picture here again of what this graph looks like. So this one's going to have a y-intercept of 0, still a slope of 2. So the line, this graph here, is going to look like this. And we've got to find the exact area under this curve from 0 to 3. So we're not, it would be like putting an infinite number of rectangles under here. Well, fortunately, with this curve, this is a geometric shape that we actually know exactly how to find the area of. It's a triangle. And we know that the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. So I can find the exact area under this curve from 0 to 3 by going base times height. So the height of this would be 6 
divide that by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So I can say the area under the graph of y equals 2x from 0 to 3 is exactly 9. Now a little later on we'll, we'll find out a way where we can find the area under any curve without having to use a geometric formula. But for now, we're just working with either doing a bunch of rectangles, or if we want the exact answer, we're going to have to rely on a geometry shape. So going back to this one here, we could have actually found the exact area under this curve, because this one would just end up being a combination of a triangle and a rectangle here at the bottom. So we could have done this one with an exact value. But it's good to, it's good to understand this concept of finding area using um, the sum of rectangles. And let's look at one final example. Let's look at this one. Now here we want the area, the exact area, because we have this integral sign here. So the exact area from negative 2 to 4 of the absolute value of x minus 1. So the absolute value of x minus 1 would be the absolute value graph moved to the right 1. So it'll look like this. And we have to find the area under this curve from minus 2. So from right here at minus 2. all the way up to 1, 2, 3, 4, right to here. So what I could do with this one is I could split this thing up into two rectangles. And I could find the area under this curve by finding the area of this rectangle and the area of that rectangle and adding them up. So let's do this. I'm going to call this A1 and I'm going to call this A2. So let's work on A1. It's a triangle. So base times height divided by 2. The base would be 1, 2, 3 across. And the height is 3 up. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 divided by 2 would be 4 and a half. And to find A2, that's also a triangle. Base times height divided by 2. So the base is 3. And the height of this one is also 3. So these two triangles have the exact same area. So then I can say the area under this curve from negative 2 to 4 is 4.5 four plus 4.5, which is 9. So that's how we can use rectangles to approximate areas under curve using a certain number of subintervals, a certain number of rectangles over an inter interval. Or if we happen to know exactly what the shape looks like under the curve, we can use a geometry formula like triangles or rectangles to find the exact area under a curve.